And I went out there, and it was real late, real late for me. It was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And uh, we were on like uh, Division Street or something like that. And that was like one of the first times I ever went out there. And there I am, I'm out there, and I'm... Part of me is, is trying to enjoy the moment, but another part of me, I had such convictions like I just shouldn't be there. And so while I was walking down that street and there's crowds of people and people doing different things, they're all having a good time. I wasn't having a good time. I was trying to have a good time. But I just couldn't connect to that whole situation. And so as we were walking, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a preacher jumped up and started preaching right there. And he starts saying, repent. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. Give your heart to Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, I wanted to die. As soon as I heard that. So they're all laughing at the man. Oh, check him out. That guy's crazy. He's crazy. I'm thinking, that guy ain't crazy. That guy's right. And so as I was walking across the street in the crowd, now remember, most of the people are there, they're kind of like they're with me because of my reputation at that time. And, and as I'm walking across the street, all of a sudden he calls me out. And he says, hey, young man, I looked, and he says, you know better, he tells me. He called me out just like that. He says, you know better. God's got a plan for your life. And I was walking. My friend was like, man, that crazy. Do you want us to get him? I, I started crying. I started crying right then and there. I put my head down. I said, he's right. I'm le we're going. We're leaving. He was a bold witness. He was a bold witness. It was leading up to the transition and the turning point in my life. You know what I saw in that moment, though, folks? I saw the glory of God. Out of those whole crowds of hundreds and hundreds of people, he was preaching at everybody. But I'm the one he called out of the crowd. I saw the glory of God and let me know that God had his hand on my life. God was watching me. Can I tell you God had his hand on your life and God was watching you? And your transition when you got in church was because of the glory of God. And we've got to have this witness and this boldness that when we, that we stand out and we're ready to be bold. Because the righteous are what? As bold as what? A lion. A lion doesn't warm up. A lion doesn't prepare. A lion is always ready to strike. A lion doesn't step into an environment and is intimidated by the environment because a lion is the environment. He says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. What I'm telling you, when we wake up in the morning and as the apostle Paul said, put on the whole armor of God, he's telling us, get ready that when you step out, you are equipped that you can be a bold witness. It don't matter who, where you are or who it is. It's about a bold witness to find that one that Jesus is looking for because when Jesus saw Matthew and there he was collecting taxes and the Jews hating him, Jesus walks by and he simply said, Matthew, follow me. He was so moved, he left his post and walked away completely from it. And he followed Jesus. What provoked that in Matthew? It was the glory. You know my name. I know who you are. You're, doing, you're the one doing all these signs. You're the one assembling people together. You're the one that has the compassion of God. You're the one that the anointing of God rests upon. You're the one that has the power with, with God. And you're calling me? Because Matthew found that point. That, oh, that idea and that prayer that if I could get out of this life, I'd get out of this life. And he followed him. You know the next thing that Matthew did? The Bible says that Matthew had a big house. And he, he created, he, that night he says, Jesus, I want you to come to my house. And he had this big old feast. And he was there and they were all there. And there was Jesus speaking into his life. He was speaking. You can read about it in Luke 5. 
He was speaking into his life. And you know when he was speaking into his life, you know what Matthew was experiencing? The glory of God. You see, it's the glory of God that brings this sense of transformation in your life. It's the glory of God that people see when they see you. What happened to you? They're seeing the glory. It's not the presence of God. The presence of God is different than the glory of God, church. The presence and the glory is different. Everyone can have access to the presence, but everyone doesn't have access to the glory. Amen. Everyone has access to the present. The Bible says uh, that, that let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord, right? So if everyone that's alive, he says for them to praise God. That means a sinner can praise God. Because a sinner could have access to the presence, but they don't have access to the glory. And I'm not speaking about presence today. Ooh, I felt that. It's more than just, ooh, I felt that. It's more than just the sensation and the goose pimples that, 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 that rise up and give you that sensation. It's so much more deeper than that. But we don't understand that. God, he did not just give us salvation. He integrated us with his glory. And it is through that glory that we can be a bold witness. <laughs> Winning your family Winning your community, winning your friends, winning that person that you think they will never be saved, and they always get angry. They get angry because when you stand in that position of what you represent and what you are witnessing, it's the glory that they come in contact with. 